everyone and welcome to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today I have a viewer request video. Viv had asked some time ago for a tutorial using Inktense pencils on a Mahi Mahi fish which if you don't know what it is go and google it they're awesome looking. So it's something that I really wanted to do but I also like to keep my videos as inclusive as possible so for those of you who are very new to drawing or don't draw at all colorists I'm looking at you and I know you're only watching this because you want to see the color combos I'm on to you but for those of you that don't draw and do still want to follow along I have taken a photograph of the line art that I have sketched out separately that is available on the community tab on YouTube. I've also put it on my other social media as well. So if you do want to follow along, go and find it, take a screenshot of it, do what you want to do with it, print it out. But I have put two line widths on. I have a really thick black outline on one set of drawings and that's so that you can trace it if you want to. And you can do that by popping it down on top of the backlight from your phone or a tablet works really well as well and you'll be able to trace over the top of it. For colourists I've got a thinner set of lines and it's just so that you can print it straight off and colour on top of it and follow along. Uh, it's a bit of an experiment. Tell me what you think about that guys. I'm always interested on your feedback but I just wanted to make as many people able to join in with this as possible. So anyway let's get on and uh, I'm going to do this with our lovely ink tents and we can see how our mahi mahi is going to turn out. Let's get going. Okay, so we're just going to have a quick run through of what we are actually using materials wise to begin with. The first thing that I have here is the paper that we're using and I am working on watercolour paper and it's just so that we can build up some layers and keep adding water without damaging the paper too much. So this is Arshi hot pressed paper and this is actually a, a, a square that I have cut but it's... Um, it's probably around postcard size, so that gives you a rough idea of the dimensions. And obviously there are my hands, which are quite small, so that gives you a, an idea of the size that we're working on. The next thing that I have is the set of Derwent Inktense blocks in this sort of little travel kit form. Uh, this came in a scroller box and it's absolutely fabulous. I love it. So we're going to be using that and these are exactly the same colours. They even give you a little swatch thing here. They are exactly the same colours as the pencils. So if you don't have these, you can use the pencils and I'll demonstrate that when we get to the, the colouring stage. Obviously, I have a selection of the Derwent Intense pencils, otherwise there would be no point in this video. And I'm going to shout out the colours when we get uh, a bit further into the video as well. A few other things that I'm going to use in addition is some white gouache and this is just for highlights if you don't want to use gouache or you don't have it you can use a white posca pen or a white gel pen all these things do the same job but i just prefer to use the gouache i also have a spare water brush here and this is to help us blend our ink tense pencils I just have a, a medium nib one here. Again, just whatever you've got is absolutely fine. Or you can use a traditional paintbrush and a pot of water. It all does the same job. This is just less messy and there's less chance of things going wrong, like knocking water pots over. And we'd rather not have that, obviously, right now. The last thing that I've got here is just a sort of funky addition. And this is a hybrid dual metallic pen. It's um, just one of these sort of rollerball pens, but the, the shade of this pen is what made me pick it out. And uh, that, again, this is just for details. You don't have to use one of these. If you have a gel pen in a similar colour, that's absolutely fine. If you don't have any gel pens, we can use one of our Inktense pencils and you will still get the same effect, just not quite as glittery. So that's us. What we're going to do now is get started sketching out our little fishy friend. And once we have done that, I will then tape down this paper when we start adding water. And all that does is stop it buckling. But while we're sketching, it's easier to keep it loose. And if you're anything like me, I like to turn the paper quite a lot. Okay, so I'm just using a, a bog standard mechanical pencil with HB lead in it. I like it because you don't have to sharpen it. And I find it really good for fine lines and light lines when you're at the sketching stage. So I looked at quite a few pictures of our Mahi Mahi friend and they have a really simple shape to them, uh, which is nice because it's easy to draw. So we'll just get zoomed in a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to start sketching out the body shape first. Now, most of the pictures I looked at were where people holding Mahi Mahi that they, they have caught and 
they're holding them out straight. So when I was sort of looking at practicing the shape, I did start out with that, that sort of, uh, you know sort of tapered shape so the head was here and it was coming down to a point here I want to give a bit of movement to the picture so I'm having him curving his tail round like this as if he's maybe jumping through the air or something or maybe he's just swimming I don't know I'll let you decide that for yourself so the main characteristics of the mahi mahi is they're much much thicker at their head than they are at the tail they do taper down in almost like a triangle shape and they have this lovely sort of arrow shaped tail their tail fins are quite long and they come to a point so you're going to want to do that and i think the reason that vivian picked this was the the colors they had beautiful beautiful colors which makes them great to draw the other thing i learned about them as well is that the male fish have this sort of blunt head shape that i'm drawing in here whereas the females have a slightly more pointed shape to them and they make them look like what I would call a more a more normal fish shape goodness me that's not very technical either so I've decided that this is a boy because I find it a more interesting shape to draw and when you're coming down the body here you just want to make sure you've got that you're coming into that sort of triangular or teardrop shape and bring it around into the tail now the other characteristics as well is that they their top fin or their is that their dorsal fin I can't remember it, it starts like almost in line with our eye at the front and it goes all the way down and it tapers as it goes down but it goes almost to their tail it is really long so we have this coming down oh, can you hear pip crunching away there <laughs> so about here that would be good and they have some fins underneath as well they have this little front fin i should really have looked up the the scientific name for these before <laughs> before i started but they've got this little one at the front and then similar to the top they have this fin underneath and again it goes quite far down almost to the tail and it tapers as it goes down now i'm sure there are there are variations in this and it will depend on the fish but this is just the you know this is like a conglomeration of all the pictures that i've looked at because i haven't seen one in real life and their eye is really close to their mouth so i'm going to pop that in there somewhere around there and they've got quite quite big sort of googly eyes you know they've got quite typical fish eyes and there is this sort of protruding lip and it is more prominent on their their top lip or the top part of their mouth and honestly, that is really all there, all there is to this little guy. They've got this little side fin as well. And it's it's it varies. I've seen really tiny ones and some of them had quite big ones. But I want to have as much of the body showing as possible. So I'm going to make this quite small deliberately. And I've just realised I've kind of put it in the wrong place. But really, it's about getting this outside shape down. Once you've got this outside line down, and if I rub out some of these sketch lines, you can see it a bit better. He's maybe a little bit fat in the middle there. He's got a bit of a belly on him. <laughs> Bring that in a little bit. And that just gives us a bit more shape. I'll fix this underneath fin as well. And then I can tidy up some of these lines, which will hopefully help you if you're following along or if you would like to try and follow along take some of these lines out around here because these are quite messy and I'm just using a kneaded eraser here most of you that have watched some of my other videos will know this is my preferred eraser um it's just really good at picking up the graphite without you know doing any sort of mega damage to your paper so there's his little mouth I'm hungry <laughs> And uh, this bottom part comes round and like most fish they have their, their sort of gill area and that is quite a, a quite a dominant feature. It's quite a dominant line because the rest of the fish is actually quite smooth. So we just put a couple of lines in there to denote that sort of gill area. I might even bring that a little bit further back actually. Now again, the key to drawing things like this, if you're if you're new to sketching, uh, if you're not, you'll know this already, but the key is to spend more time looking at your references than looking at what you're drawing because that that is what makes you pick up on things and makes you better at sketching. So there we go. I'm just giving him a little diddly fin. How cute is that? So that is the basic shape. That is all there is to it. There is nothing else to do. So as you can see, it's something that's really simple to draw. Obviously, we're going to add in some detail, but we're going to do it with our ink tens pencils. We're not going to do it with pencil because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this kneaded eraser and I am going to lighten up. I'm going to tidy up some lines first, like round his tail. 
Um, I'm going to lighten up this preliminary sketch as much as I can just so that I basically I'm leaving myself guidelines and nothing else and that is so that it doesn't show through the any of the ink tense pencil because that's not what we want. Now to do that take your kneaded eraser and just kind of dab at the paper. You still want to be able to see the lines because obviously we need to know where we're putting down everything else but just try and make them as light as possible and as I say that, that will help them to not intrude on the, the beautiful colours that we're going to put down because there's nothing worse than a big grey muddy line poking through all your beautiful colour. Okay, so I've got this little guy taped down on a bit of really hard cardboard now. So that's going to keep everything steady and, as I say, stop some buckling. So the first thing I'm going to do is a sort of water effect round about him. And I am going to use the these Inktense pans to do that. If you don't have them, you can achieve the same effect with the pencils. So the colours that I'm using for this are going to be the Mid Ultramarine which is 0860. I don't know if you can see that on this paper because it's kind of see-through. Mid ultramarine. And I'm also going to use a tiny bit of the teal green, which is 1300. Now, in order to achieve this effect, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, wet the paper and we want to do it round about our fish. We don't want anything over the top of our fish. So I'm going to go for a more sort of mottled splashy effect and it's just to sort of frame what it is we're doing if you're using the pencils the best thing to do is get yourself a paintbrush and dip your paintbrush in the water and then take the paint off the end of the pencil and put it on your paper once you've wet the paper so that's the way to do it if you're just using the pencils basically we just want to get a sheen on this paper and this is called a, like a wet and wet technique and it's quite a common technique that's used in watercolor so we want to sort of bring this round here. So you want the paper to be shiny. You don't want puddles of water. You just want that nice sort of sheen so that you know that the paper is damp. Once I'm happy that I've got enough water down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water brush here and I'm dipping it into the mid ultramarine. I need to get my brush going. I do have some, um, just some scrap paper off to the side here and that's just to clean my brush and get my, my water brush going. So I'm going to pick up some of this and I'm just going to start sort of splodging it in and you can see that it's starting to spread out already. Now the more water you add to this the more it's going to spread out. Bearing in mind it is ink you're working with, this does, once it's dry you can't manipulate it, you can't start moving it about. So now all I'm doing is taking a wet paintbrush again and I'm just going to very very gently back and forth over Maybe some dabs. As I say, I, I don't want this to be any sort of exact science, but just do that while the ink tense is still damp because it lets you manoeuvre it round a little bit and it just gives you that opportunity to manipulate it. So there we go. And if you feel it's not quite what you're after, you can just obviously go back into your into your colour, whether it's off your the tip of your pencil or whether it's into your little pan like mine. Now I'm going to use a kind of back and forth motion now to get that sort of more watery feel. It's starting to dry a little bit, but of course that's okay. It's going to have to dry at some point. Now this is, this is like very much an aesthetics thing. You have to go until it's where you want it to be. Um, some people will be satisfied with you know quite a sort of blotchy effect whereas other people will think it looks unfinished and feel like they have to keep going this is the beauty of drawing and not being confined by any sort of rules it's up you're making the rules so it's up to you what to, you know to decide what you think is nice or when you think something looks watery enough but this is one of the reasons I really enjoy stuff like this. You've got so much freedom and there's nobody telling you what's the right and the wrong thing to do because, well, what do they know? <laughs> so I say I'm just going back and forth here and with my paintbrush again. Let's just add a little bit of this in. Get this little guy looking cool. There we go. So that's left me with quite a nice sort of backdrop for him. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this layer dry completely and uh, we can come back in a little while and we can start adding in some more layers and we can start on our fish as well. 
Okay, now that this is nice and dry, we're going to take our next colour and layer it on top of what we have just done. Now, remembering that the ink tends is in fact ink and once it is dry, it, it tends not to move very much. I wouldn't say that it's permanent, but it's almost there. So we can go over the top of this safe in the knowledge that nothing underneath is going to move about. So the same technique again. I'm just going to squish down some more water. And I'm not being I'm not being as careful to cover all the areas. I'm just adding a little bit here and there, making sure that I'm not drenching the paper because that's not what we want. You can see now why I picked watercolor paper to do this. I reckon mixed media paper would hold up quite well as well. Um, if you're not in the market for watercolor paper, it is designed to take a little bit of water. So I'm just going to add my teal green now. And uh, again, I'm not not going to be hugely careful about what I'm doing because I don't want to be careful. Where's the, where's the fun in that? And then I'm just going to take a wet brush again, a clean brush, and I'm just going to do a bit of, oh, took that too far. That's okay. I can take that off while it's still wet. With my finger, you can use a bit of tissue to do that as well if, um, if you find that easier. This is what I like about this, guys, because you know I will always show you the mistakes. I will always keep them in there because we are human, we make mistakes, but it doesn't have to ruin your picture or anything like it. Okay, so I've got a little bit of uh, interest in there round about now. I don't want to do any more to that because I don't want it to take away from what we're doing in the middle. So that is literally the next layer. So once again, we'll just leave this to dry and then we can come back and we can get started on the exciting part in the middle. All right, so it's time to get going with the pencils. So here are the Inktense pencils that we're going to be using for our fish. And if I, I would really like to just show you them all together because they look delightful when you see them lined up. Oh, these are so pretty when you see them all together. Mm. <laughs> okay, so we are working with, first of all, I'm gonna try and show you these on camera as well. Sherbet Lemon, Apple Green, Vivid Green, and Teal Green. Green Aquamarine. <laughs> Sounded really Scottish there, didn't I? Green Aquamarine. Sea Blue. And finally, the darkest colour is the Deep Blue. Now, that seems like an awful lot of pencils for a pretty small fish here, but we're going to work in layers. That's the way to kind of think about this. The same way as you would in coloured pencil and the same way as you would in watercolour. There is absolutely no difference. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to start with our lightest colour and we're going to work our way up darker. So we're going to start under here and behind is Gil and we just want to use quite a light hand and we want to put down a light layer of this Sherbet Lemon and we want to bring it all the way down following the shape of his body, you know, the underside of his body. Now you don't have to press hard here because we can go back in later on and we can add another layer and we want to bring this colour all the way down so fill that tail in make sure you've got it all filled in now this we're going to blend quite a lot of these together but in the reference photos i've looked at this comes quite far up on the front part of the body and it tapers away just the same way as the shape of the body does as we get further down so i would say if you go for sort of just above that little side fin there that's probably high enough and round the front here, it depends the way the light's hitting. So I'm going to go for mostly underneath here and slightly up the side of this gill. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a few white patches. You can see I'm doing that there. And again, it's something that I, that I saw quite a lot in a lot of the pictures I looked at. So then we're going to move on to our apple green. And really what we're doing here is kind of going on a gradient. So if you have a slight overlap with that, yellow just a tiny little bit now because bearing in mind we are going to blend all these together with our water so you're almost working in stripes here that's probably a safe way to to describe and it's up to you where you lay these colors down as long as you're following that sort of rough outline of a gradient you know you can pop a few bits in here and there because it's just going to make it a bit more interesting it doesn't have to be solid blocks of color but see i am deliberately going lightly just now and there is reason for that which you will see as we as we sort of move along. I'm going to pop a little bit under here. Now, the thing I did notice is this top lip on most of them was very much yellow. 
So I'm going to fill that in quite heavily because that's that's quite decisive. So just moving up through our pencils now onto the vivid green. I'm going to bring this down here. Just putting it down next to the the apple green. Now the lovely thing about these Inktense pencils is that you don't actually have to be that careful. Um, by the time you sort of squish it about with the water and everything, it's uh, it's quite forgiving and that's one of the reasons I really like these pencils. Now I'm go carefully going around his eye here because that's not to uh, what we what we want to do and I'm just jumping back to the apple green because I want to pop a little bit in here bring this down I'm not joining it up with what I've already done but I'm just popping it in to sort of get it closer together if you like and then on to my teal green so you can see where we're going with this now it's pretty straightforward I'm just popping a little bit of that down. The The teal green and the vivid green look quite close together when you actually put them down on the paper, but when you activate them with water, you can see more, more of a difference. On to my green aquamarine now. So I'm bringing this kind of down the front of his head. And I'm just leaving a sort of stripe at the top there, at the top part of his body, you know, down his back. Bring this round. And then I'm going to use the sea blue just for this very top part here. Now we are, as I say, we are going to build on these. So there is, you know, don't worry if it looks amateur or patchy. I mean, mine looks like not very much at the moment, but you just have to trust me on this one. We're going to start on the palest colour, which is the yellow. And I'm going to start down at the tail because I'm left handed and it lets me work right to left. And I'm keeping the strokes as smooth as I can, but we have to keep moving. That's one of the things with ink tents is you have to work quite quickly. So I'm making sure I'm getting that whole tail area done. And then I'm going to move up and I'm trying to stick to the yellow for the time being. Till under the, his gill, because that's a good place to stop. And then I'm just going to start to work my way up. Towards this green colour. I'm trying to do all of the yellow first and it's just so that I don't cross contaminate and end up with really muddy looking colours. But as I near the green, I can start sort of blending it in, which is the plan. But it just lets me keep that yellow part nice and, you know, nice and crisp and yellow. There we go. You can see it's starting to blend now and then you can get a bit braver as you go. So I'm trying to follow the shape of the fish with my brush. You can see I'm, I'm sort of following down this curve. Just blending that in now. You can see how that blue is transitioning into the green, it's lovely. If you have a few areas where you've maybe your pencil lines are a little bit heavier, then you can just don't scrub at them, but you can go over them a few more times because that is going to help you blend them out a little bit more. I'm just cleaning off my brush every now and then because I don't want to contaminate, as I said before, these lighter colours. So I'm just working my way around here. There we go. So work as quickly as you can. And if you're not used to using your ink tense very much, it's a good idea to get a little bit of practice in first. There we go. So you can see, even though that is just a really light layer of water, uh, water, a really light layer of pencil, you can see the colour starting to pop already. So I've cleaned my brush off and now I'm going to move on to the head area. And again, I'm starting with these very light parts where I haven't put a lot of the, the yellow down. And then I can work my way into the, the apple green that I've got down here as well. Now these little sort of semicircular lines that I've used, it just helps to convey the shape of the front of our little friend's face here. And it's up to you how much you want these to stand out or how much you want to blend them in together. That is absolutely your choice. The thing is as well, if you're not happy with it, you can leave it to dry and you can go back in and put more pencil over it. That is, you know, that is absolutely not a problem. So there we go. So now we have to play the waiting game and we shall wait for this to dry. Now while we're doing that, we can work on this little fin down here and this one here because this part will be mostly dry by now. So the, the underside from what I have seen is quite pale in terms of the colour of the fins. So I've got my, my sherbet lemon and I'm just going to pop some of this down. these little fins 
Now we want to be able to differentiate them from the, the actual body part and recognise them as a fin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the apple green and I'm just going to press quite hard and put a couple of flicks out on that fin and I'm going to do the same here and again the colours depending on the pictures I was looking at the colours vary quite wildly so it, again you, it's open to interpretation and then lastly I'm going to run that apple green down where that underside fin meets the body and then what we can do is we can sort of feather that a little bit just by using some circular motions and I'm only using a medium pressure here and then it means we can blend it out and it'll get a nice smooth gradient so you can see just from that tiny part there the difference that it makes to the depth of the picture as well and it just gives it a really nice sort of effect so again making sure my water brush is clean or the end of your paintbrush is clean I'm going to start in the yellow and I'm just going to gently blend those in together and I'm going to pull some of that green down into the yellow area so that's a bit more of a delicate operation and then I'm going to do the same here as much as I can. I don't have much of my yellow showing. And then we're just going to start to blend the apple green into it. Now you might have to work this a little bit because it's a heavier line that you've put down, but that's okay. That's part of the fun. You can squish it about a little bit while it's still wet as well. Now the, my tail's almost dry, so I'm happy enough with that. And I'm going to take my vivid green and what I want to do is start to put in some of the, the detail in the detail, get it? Ha ha ha, that's hilarious. I want to put in some of the detail in the tail, but as it stands, I'm not happy with the, the vibrancy of this yellow. So I'm going to take my Sherbet Lemon again, and I'm going to lean a little bit harder than I did last time. And I'm really going to get some more of this pencil down. And then I'm just going to go back over that with my, my water brush again. There you go, we're really popping out now. Look at that, that's marvellous. It's actually starting to look a little bit like a golden yellow, which is kind of strange, but that's okay. So for this little fin, I want to start with the teal green. And I just want to put a wee layer of that down. Now I was going to try and follow the shape that I'd made here, but I seem to get have it sort of slightly lost. But see, that should go over the top of the paper, okay? There we go. And round the eye is usually yellow. And again, that's it's up to you how you want to do this, but it seems to really pop out. So I'm just going to really like... <laughs> Fill that in there. The only thing I don't like about these Inktense pencils is they do roll about a lot. Um, but oh, you can't have it always, I suppose. So I'm going to do my eye first. Now I've left a little space for the black part, which we will put in once this is dry. But look how much that eye's popping out against the blue. It's awesome. And then I'm going to do this little fin. Now I'm trying to keep it as even as possible here. Because again, we're going to put some detail over the top of this. So I want to have quite a solid base to work from, but it is quite a small area, so, you know, give myself a little bit of breathing space. <laughs> I'd be quite forgiving with myself. Okay, we're going to work on this fin now at the top. So let's see where we're starting with that. We're going to start with our teal green, and I'm just going to fill in this entire area. Just as I've done before quite lightly because again we have because we're on some watercolor paper here or if you're on mixed media paper you do have room to you know to put in a couple of layers and really all you need is maybe two two layers sometimes three depending on how vibrant you want to go if you really want it to be jumping off the page at you then you can do that just making sure that I stick to the shape that I have drawn out here he's looking very fishy now isn't he <laughs> Again, just make sure I'm cleaning my water brush off. Again, I've, st I've still got my scrap of paper here. I don't know why I've got it on the right-hand side. It would make more sense for me to have it on the left, but uh, never mind. And with this, because we're, we're going sort of block colour, the same way as we did with that little side fin, you can just start wherever you want to start, but you have to work quite quickly. Now, I'm just I'm following the shape of the, the fish again with my brush strokes. So it just makes it a little bit easier. But you want to make sure that outside edge is as smooth as possible because obviously that's a very defined area of, of a fish. Is this fin. Excellent. 
Right, we're going to go back to his tail area now. That feels quite dry. And I'm going to take the teal green. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Where my green from the body has come down, I am just going to put in a couple of sort of flicky lines that come roughly from that area. Do again, doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to blend these out. So in tiny circular motions, I'm just going to work over those lines that I've flicked out. And all that's doing is sort of blurring them out a little bit. Again, nice and simple and you can work pretty quickly to get the, you know, the look that you want without too much hassle. I still want a little bit of definition in some of them. But... So there you go, that's how much manipulation you've got. I've almost completely blurred out the end of that flick on that side of the tail without any bother at all. Again, some pictures I looked at, there was a lot of green in their tails and other pictures there just wasn't so much. So up to you, do however you think looks best. So this is where we're going to get the vibrancy in and we're just going to go straight in and back over what it is we've been doing. So I've got my sherbet lemon here and I'm just going to pop another layer of that down there. And then I'm going to go with my apple green. So you can be a bit more liberal this time, you can press a little bit harder. Because we want these colours to be really, really vibrant now. Because that's the whole point of doing a, you know, a drawing like this, because they are just incredible fish, you know, in terms of their colour. They're just amazing. So I'm just going to work on this body section first. So there is my apple green. And I'm going to get some vivid green in there as well. Again, I'm just sticking with this circular motion. I don't have to be too careful, which is great. That suits me just fine. And I'm going to start to join this up around the head now because this is where obviously the colour kind of comes together. And we want this to be one sort of fluid section from the top part of that head. In with my teal. And if you've got a slight overlap in these, that's, that's absolutely fine. That's kind of what you would expect, really. And then I have the green aquamarine. Now you can see I'm sort of back to the same place. I'm just leaving this stripe at the top there for our darkest colour. So that's actually worked out really, really well. And then on to our sea blue. And we're going to get ready to go with our water brush again. The thing I like about the Ink Tense pencils is you can actually use them by themselves and they stand up really well on their own but they just explode when you put water with them and that's what I love about them. They're just amazing. I do really like the the graphy tint pencils as well. Um, they are much more sort of earthy type tones, which is great for, you know, for sort of most nature type pictures. And I absolutely love them. But the ink tents, I think, are definitely more versatile, but the colours are less... Not realistic, but they're they're less likely to be used in nature, shall we say. So I'm really starting to get in into these colours now. And I'm having to work quickly because I'm going the full length of the body. So we want to try and keep these areas as wet as possible as we're working around so we don't end up with lots of lines. You do kind of want lines because it conveys the movement and the shape and the light in terms of the actual, you know, being a living being and the fact that it's a fish. But you don't want lots of, you know, you don't want these sort of regimented areas. Still got time to manipulate this round here, around the eye. And let's blend this out a little bit as well. Oh, he's looking smashing. He's looking a smashing fellow. <laughs> Okay, so now I can move down into this jaw area again. And all I'm going to do is just go back over those the same areas with the same pencils just to lighten these up. Not lighten them up, brighten them up. That's what I meant to say. Go ham with the green, the apple green. <laughs> Maybe a little bit on there as well. And again, just making sure the tip of my water brush is clean. I find this quite amusing at this stage because I'm always banging on about... Um, in colouring books when Kirby Rosanna's does his Kirby creatures and he doesn't give them any pupils in their in their eyes and uh, <laughs> here's my fish right now <laughs> he's looking pretty pretty um pupilless 
but we're, we're going to fix that right up in just a little minute. Okay, while the body's drying now, I'm going to move back on to these, um, this back fin here, which hopefully will be, yes, it's a little bit drier. So what I have got, in addition to the, the sea blue, which is the darkest blue we used on the body, I'm going to take the deep blue now as well. And I'm going to use the deep blue almost as like a liner pencil. So I'm going to press quite heavily and I'm going to, in a sort of feathering motion, I'm just going to run it down where that fin joins the body. And you can see how much that's standing out. And what that I'm trying to achieve with that is just to separate the two from each other, but also give that idea of a slight curvature so it's going to be darker in where his, where his fin starts. And then I can just lightly sort of put a, a sort of feathered edge on this. Again, for the colourists that watch my colouring videos, this will be really familiar to you and you're probably familiar with the process anyway, which is great. So we'll just feather this out a little bit. Do, 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 do. These pencils are so much fun. I love them. I really do. And then taking the sea blue, which is the slightly lighter blue, we want to start putting in detail on that fin. So we're going to follow the shape of the body and we're just going to put in some lines and again they don't have to be perfect no one's no one's gonna judge you it just depends how bothered you are about these kind of things more for yourself than anyone so you can just use a medium pressure and as they come down to the this sort of tighter space you want them to curl around a bit to follow the shape of that tail so i'm just going to go in and add shorter ones in between the big ones that i've put in as well And what we want to do now is take the green aquamarine and as a sort of gradient up from this blue colour. So that feathered edge, that's what we're going to use to pull our green aquamarine out with. I like the fact that that rhymes so much. Green aquamarine. Now I'm leaving a sort of strip along the, along the top there. And take my water brush again. So we're going to start to effectively blend this out now. So this is one of the few times we'll go from dark to light. Now you need to make sure that you keep your brush quite dry because if you don't, you will just end up dragging all of that dark colour and then ruining this, you know, this lighter area. So we want to blend that out as much as possible. So make sure you wipe the edge of your brush quite regularly to take off the excess ink so that you can blend it out very gradually. Now I'm only just touching that dark blue line along the body. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of only blending out half of that, that dark blue line. I hope that makes sense. Because the other half of it we're going to blend into the body in the way. But you can see how rich that colour is. It's just lovely. Now it is going to get quite tight down here. So don't worry too much if it's not you know, uniform, you don't really need to panic yourself about that. See, the beauty is that there's so many variations in the colour of these, so, you know, there's every chance that what you're doing is actually on a mahi-mahi somewhere. <laughs> I'm just having a little pat to see how we're doing here. Okay, taking the vivid green now, what I want to do is just pop in a few lines down here, and I'm doing these very carefully. I'm not blending these out, these are staying here. I'm sure some of you will be familiar with the, the anatomy. If I just zoom in a little bit so you can see that, because that's quite far away. The anatomy of the, the fins of these uh, types of animals, you know, they have these sort of, it's like a, like a skeletal structure, and it's just where they, they sort of web out. And I'm just going to add in a few underneath. I'm not, not going to make that really, really obvious. And then very lightly, I'm just going to run that vivid green down the inside part of here again. Here we go. And then I'm going to blend that out. Very slightly. I still want the line to be there so that you can see that it's a line. But I am not going to touch these, these little, we'll call them skeletal lines. So onto this side fin now and I want to take the sea blue. And I'm going to do the same for that as well. I am going to bring these out. And I'm pressing quite hard. 
And then just on this side, I'm going to feather that last line and maybe one in there. And this is just to give a bit of uh, a bit more depth to what we're doing. So very carefully, if you want to skip this step out, I understand. But we want to give as much dimension to what we're doing as possible. So to have those light and dark areas on that fin gives it some shape. And it lets you see that some areas are raised and some areas aren't. Oh no, I've put my hand in this here. That was still wet. That's okay, we can fix that. That's 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 not a problem. <laughs> right, the other part that we've got to work with here now, and I think I'm going to use the apple green for this, is the part that's in behind the gill. So I'm going to be very careful here because this is obviously still wet. But we want to define this area a little bit more. So along the line where we drew that gill area in, I'm just going to pop in a little bit of this green and I'm going to bring it up to where I think it should end. That is by no means anatomically correct, but hey. And then I can take the vivid green, which was the next colour up in the, in the sequence, if you like. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of that in there too. Because I really want that to stand out. There we go, oh, we're looking good. The only thing, when I look at this now, it's coming along, but what I can see is that this area is really sort of disappearing. So I just want to go back in with my apple green. This paper's still damp, so it's actually kind of smooshing out the pencil a little bit. You might want to wait a wee while before you do this, but I'm just gonna go for it because time constraints, video length, etc., etc. You guys know the drill by now. And then again with my deep blue, I want to just pop a tiny little bit round the outside of this eyeball. Just follow the line round of the pencil. And then very carefully just add a little bit of water to that. And pull it out very slightly. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit of definition there now. Okay, so I think I've got too much white here. So I'm just going to join up, while this is still damp, I'm just joining up some of these areas round the, round the mouth and the face. There we go, I'm a bit happier with that now. Okay, so what we want to do is now we want to start and blend out this deep blue line find my pencil again and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this to make it a little bit easier so I don't put my hand in things again and I'm just going to put a feathered edge on this side the same way as I did on the fin side just make that a little bit softer so that we can maybe blend it out it's going to it's still going to be there you know you're still going to be able to see it so I want to keep a defined line so that it separates out the fin but on this side we want to blend it out a little bit more so I'm just using those little circular motions the same way as I do with my pencil. Make sure I'm keeping my brush nice and clean so that we can blend it out into the other colours. Keep that really defined around this side. And then just little circular motions. I've got a pippy here stuck to the fish. I don't know if you can see it under its chin. I think it must have come off my jumper. Oh dear. That's one thing much as I love this yellow jumper that I was so proud to show you all. It is a dog hair magnet, so that was a, a fail on my part, but never mind. There we go. <laughs> now again, don't worry if the transitions aren't perfect. As I say, when you when you look at them, they do have a sort of shape to the colours. You know that they do have this sort of feeling of movement between the the darkest and the lightest. But you can see how much more definition we've got from that area now. The paper is quite wet, so we want that to dry properly before we add in our finishing touches to our little fish. And as you can see, if we zoom out a little bit, he's sticking out pretty well now. He's looking pretty awesome. So I'll just let this dry and I'll be back in a jiffy. Okay, so everything's dry now and it's really important at this stage that you look at your drawing stroke painting and decide if there's anything you're unhappy with in terms of this base layer because we're going to start adding a little bit more detail and the finishing touches on top. So make sure you're entirely happy with what's down. I'm not happy with this part up here, but I'm just going to pop a little bit more down 
just to try and even this out a little bit. And you can see that looks better already. And I'm just going to tickle this very, very slightly. Give it a tickle. So that's good enough for me. I'm going to take my deep blue pencil again and the flicky lines that we did for his top fin here, we're going to do them again. And we're going to press really hard this time. Now you can see how nice that's looking over the top of the, the stuff that we've actually blended out with our water brush. So I'm just following what I did before. Some of the lines have disappeared, some of them haven't. That's great, that's absolutely fine. And I'm going to just stick in a few more. So I'm using a much shorter and lighter stroke just to flick these in. And you can see what it's doing is it's accentuating that gradient that we've put in behind it. Now we're not blending these out, these are going to stay there. So just take your time and work your way around until you're happy. Now you can put as many flicks in as you want. But see, I like it to sort of build up that gradient effect. And that's exactly what I was wanting. So that's absolutely perfect for me and I'm quite happy with that. The next thing that we're going to do is pop his eye in. It is entirely up to you how you put in the black part of his eye. You have options here. If you do not want to put any liner pen or pencil round your fish, then it would be an idea to do it in pencil or in the in the Inktense pencil. And I've got the black outliner here and I'm just going to squish that in there. Give him his eyeball. There we go. He looks like a fish again. Yay. <laughs> it's really bad, isn't it? <laughs> okay, and the next part is the exciting part. Mahi Mahi have very um, vivid blue green spots on them and you can use one of the colours that you've used here already or you can use a gel pen. If I was using the colours here I would use probably one of the darker blues either the green aquamarine or the the sea blue. I think the deep blue would be too dark but I see I have this uh, gel pen here and this one's got a little bit of sparkle in it. I'm just going to show you on here. If I uh, If I do that and then hold it up. Hopefully that'll focus. Yep, so you can see how shimmery that is. It's lovely. Stickles will have the same effect. Wink of Stella, anything like that. So if you're feeling fancy, then you can go for it. And what we want to do is just start plonking on some of these. So want to make sure it's dry. So I'm maybe not start at the top end just now. But these spots seem to be or go everywhere. There's no uh, you know, there's no discrimination as to whether they're just on their backs and some of them have some, some on their bellies. So go to town, put as many or as few in as you want. Maybe have one down here. Just to go for it. I'm going to give him a really big one there. <laughs> and maybe one or two on his fin as well. So there was, there was loads that I looked at. Some had very few spots and some had loads. Not a lot of them had very many on this part of their face though. I don't know whether that's consistent with, um, you know, some sort of genetic makeup thing, but that was just what I've observed. So if I tilt this now in the light, you can see we've got a little bit of spangle going on, which is really nice. The other thing I want to do as well, just while I'm thinking about it, where is that outliner? Here it's here. I just want to put a little bit of a shadow in around this side fin here. So... I'm just taking my pencil very, very gently, really gently, and I'm just going to pop a little bit in there. And then I can go over it until it's where I want it to be. And then I can just sort of feather that out. And that's just to show that there's, you know, it's, he's lifted his little fin up away from his body a little bit. I don't want to do it over the rest of the picture because I don't want to spoil the, the overall impact of the picture because obviously this is now like, it's kapow, it's like right there, it's in your face. Okay, okay. so you might have to wait for your gel pen to dry or if you've used something else, you might have to, you know, give it a bit of a, wa a, bit of a waft. So the next step is to take your, either your white gel pen or your Posca pen, whatever it is you're going to use for your highlight. And I've got a bit of a skinnier paintbrush here that comes to more of a point and I am literally just going to dip this straight into the tube. I kind of squeeze it up a little bit. Some, uh, some types and some brands of gouache are really, really thick, you know, like they're really gummy. So you might have to water it down, but you'll know yourself if you're if you're into that kind of thing. So what I want to do here is I'm going with this, this curve of the colours. 
and I'm going to start this just above his eye here and all I want to do is just get that line in. Now it's going to be a broken line because this shine isn't going to be uniform all the way down. So I'm just going to kind of like, um, you know, like a sort of dot dash type effect. And again, I find it easier to turn the, the piece rather than turn my hand. And I don't know why that is, but I think it's a bad habit. I'm sure people that have been painting or drawing for a long time will tell me it's a terrible habit, but hey. As I come down towards the tail, I do want this line to get a little bit thinner. There we go. Now, I feel that like that's too uniform. It looks like the line's in the centre of a road if you live in the UK. We have, we have like a dashed line in the middle of the road. So I'm going to thicken this up and join it together. Just make that one a bit thicker as well. And then I'm just going to add in a few little extra bits under here. Yeah. Get that little bit of shine. And again, it's up to you how much of this you want to do. But I just want to give this sort of nice illusion of, oh, this is so lovely and shiny. And lastly, my favourite part. I am going to go back to my little Derwent palette for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some splatters on. The easiest way to do this if you're using the pencils is to put a little bit of water in, in a, either a dish or in a palette if you've got one. Take some of the, the, the ink off the end of the pencil with a paintbrush and then swirl it about in the water and keep doing that until you get the consistency that you want. So the colour I'm taking here is the bright blue which is 1000 and I'm just making this really really wet like as much as as much as I can squish on like with the water brush and I'm just making it really goopy and runny and all the rest of it and then I'm just taking my water brush and I'm just going to start tapping and I'm going to get these lovely splatters just to get that nice watery effect let's try and get some up here as well <laughs> And as you continue to tap, obviously it's going to start to dilute slightly, so you're going to get slightly lighter splatters as well. There we go. So we're just going to leave that to dry again, and then we are almost done. Okay, I haven't shown this on camera because my hair dryer doesn't stretch. While it's still damp, I've taken the hair dryer and just given it a quick sort of short burst to splay out some of these blue splashes to make them look more like splashes. So uh, that was all I did there, just sort of, you know, put it at different angles and, you know, as hair dryers do. <laughs> just to make it a little bit more interesting. Oh, wow, you guys are just loving this, aren't you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, if you're feeling fancy as well, you can do the same with your, your gouache if you want to you know, have some different coloured splatter. So all I do is sort of pop a tiny little bit onto, onto a palette somewhere. Any surface will do. I'm just using the, the palette and the, the Derwent uh, Inktense set. And then just add a little bit of water to it. And just make it sort of quite runny. Because it, it can be really thick. So it does vary from brand to brand. Some are a lot thicker than others. I find that the Winsor & Newton one is really thick. And again, just do the same thing again. You can just sort of splatter it on. See, it's up to you how far you take this. Some people absolutely love their splatters and some people it's something that they're not that keen on. So I think with the white though, it's different because it's not really taking away from what we've got going on in the centre of the picture. But it just adds a bit of interest and it adds a bit of texture as well to what's going on. So that's just something for you to think about as well if you fancy doing that too. Okay, so we're all nice and dry now and we are just going to take the tape off and we can admire our handiwork. If you've gone quite close to the edge with your initial sort of wishy-washiness, you will have a nice white border around the outside. And it's something that I quite like on my pictures, especially now that I'm doing a bit more watercolour painting. Uh, it just seems to, to have a more, a more finished look to it, I think, rather than you just sort of, you know, like 
plonking something in the middle of a sheet of paper. And the buckling, I mean, considering the amount of water and the number of layers and scrubbing and things that we've done, this paper's held up really well. But see, it does do better if you tape it down. Just ordinary masking tape's fine. You don't have to have pretty washy, washy, washy tape like that, but that's up to yourself. So there we go. That is our finished Mahi Mahi fish. And I just think he's, he's adorable. I think they're so ugly, they're cute. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. So all that's left for me to do is to sign the bottom. And I'm going to do it in this corner with my fancy schmancy pen because I like it. And there we go. So I hope you have enjoyed following along or even just watching if you've uh, not been brave enough to have a go. I've had great fun doing this. I love using the Inktense pencils. I think they're fabulous. And uh, I would love to hear your comments down below and what you think. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And we shall see you in the cave another time. Bye for now.